Very important broadcast lined up for you today. It is Sunday, the 19th of September 2010. We're going to be live here for the next two hours, and we're going to have open phones for first-time callers, people who have never been able to get through live on air, uh, folks that have been listening for years have never tried to call. We would love to hear from you today. The toll-free number is 888-201-2244, 888 and we will get you up and on the air. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of important news here today to go over on the economy. Uh, the Arizona Republic is talking about criminal investigations of Joe Arpaio, uh, the sheriff out in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've got members of U.S. platoon in Afghan uh, accused of killing civilians for sport in Afghanistan. We have uh, Janet Napolitano, head of Homeland Security, making jokes about being known as Big Sis, making jokes about Big Sis, Big Brother. So I thought we'd look at some of the things that have continued uh, from Bush and now under Obama. If this isn't Big Brother, then I don't know what is. Uh, that is going to be coming up uh, as well. Uh, there's a very powerful uh, article that just talks about a, a couple-year period, a four-year period in China where 45 million people were killed by the communists. Uh, that's in the London Independent. Uh, Mao, the Chinese say, killed 84 million. Our government says uh, 64 million. Uh, but their own government uh, says uh, 80 plus million. Uh, but it's admitted on record 45 million in just a four year period. And if you look at the policies of Mao Zedong, they're very similar to the carbon taxes and the globalists. Well, of course they are. Our government admits they put Mao Zedong into power. That's declassified now uh, in 1949. And so to understand the dream scenario for the global social engineers, you need to look at Mao Zedong. Very important. It's also admitted our government uh, put, uh, helped uh, put the head of the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot, into power. Zbigniew Brzezinski's written two books bragging about that, and they killed 30% of the population there. And, of course, he was supposedly anti-communist. All that matters is they exterminate a large portion of society, re-engineer things. That's how they wipe out old power structures and put in their new power structures, similar to the Bolsheviks, of course, funded by the U.S. and British governments uh, in 1917, 1918. So we're going to be looking uh, at that report uh, today. Uh, there's good news. Uh, Texas sues to block bazaar. That's the quote, global warming, EPA rules. And uh, this is a uh, announcement uh, made by Texas Attorney General, Mr. Abbott, uh, going into the fact that it's all a complete fraud to steal money, that it's based on scientific fraud, uh, and so Texas is suing to block this going in. Of course, Congress would not pass the carbon taxes, uh, so uh, Jackson and others uh, in the Obama administration are going ahead with it. They're now officially not calling it a global warming. They're calling it global climate disruption. So they've got a new fraud. First, it was the Ice Age in the 70s, since the 80s and 90s and 2000, 2010. Uh, the last 25 years, it's been global warming. Now it's just a thunderstorm is evil and, and, and is abnormal. They actually say that. A snowstorm, a thunderstorm, hot weather, anything is abnormal. And if you pay a tax to Al Gore and the central banks, they're going to take really good care of you. Uh, so that's coming up. Also, uh, FDA won't allow food to be labeled free of genetic modification. Uh, report has now come out uh, on that uh, front. This is being reported by Reuters, AP, and Raw Story. Uh, it's got a boil down on it. And so, yeah, oh, they'll tax you for a thunderstorm because that's abnormal. They'll tax you for exhaling carbon dioxide that plants breathe, that plants respirate from and creates photosynthesis with the sun. Uh, but uh, they won't let you know you're eating a salmon that's got insect genes in it. They won't let you know uh, you're eating uh, genetically engineered soybeans. Uh, they won't let you know about something really serious. That's because they're a bunch of frauds. So that's all uh, coming up as well. But first, on the other side of this quick break, globalists openly push world taxation and a new global currency. It's here and it's happening now. This is going on now. This is happening now. We're going to break down this all-important issue and try to alert the world population. On the other side, InfoWars.com is the website. Thank you for joining us, my friends. It is Sunday, the 19th day of September 2010. On this live Sunday broadcast, we're going to be here for the next two hours. 
We're also simulcasting the syndicated radio broadcast in full living, multicam, multicast shoot uh, in uh, video living color at Prison Planet. Dot TV if you'd like to watch the show, not just listen to it. And if you are watching, you'll notice that I have all these giant stacks of important news. One of the big ones I'm going to be getting into in the next hour after we cover uh, some other important news and take your calls is state's Homeland Security chief goes into hiding. This is out of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. And uh, here is another report out of the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Quakers anti-war rallies on alert list. And what are we talking about here? Well, here's uh, our report from uh, yesterday. We also reported on this originally and first. Two weeks ago, Pennsylvania Homeland Security targeted tea parties and put them on terrorist list and said they may be terrorist uh, because they want to cut taxes. That was one of the reasons used. And it turns out $125,000 was paid to a Israeli company to collect the databases and spy on people. And it turns out at the G20 last year, they were actually used to uh, create intelligence reports for pre-raids on some of the uh, anti-G20 activist groups, including liberal groups and conservative groups. And so we're going to be talking about that coming up. Uh, and I want to dovetail it with this report, uh, this report, uh, is out of the Arizona Republic. Arizona Sheriff Arpaio's office surveilled political rivals. And they say that criminal charges uh, are in the making right now because he used his intelligence unit to spy on political rivals. Now, I've got mixed feelings about Arpaio. Uh, he is tough on crime. He's bucked the feds on the open borders and the illegal alien crime wave, uh, but he has violated uh, citizens' rights, and I'm against that. Uh, but you notice he's the guy trying to actually enforce the law against illegal aliens, and so the feds are suing him, suing the state, uh, doing criminal investigations, and they've now gone in and gotten sheriff's deputies to claim he was doing things that are clearly illegal. Now, I, I've got a question here. Uh, you've got uh, all over the country, Homeland Security hiring British intelligence, Israeli intelligence. I mean, even FEMA put out press releases for NLE 09 and admitted in a drill with 14 nations that they had 14 foreign countries in the U.S. helping surveil uh, mainly conservatives and libertarians. And it's clearly illegal. Uh, and uh, But the point is, why are they going after Arpaio? This is all part of the selective enforcement. So we're going to be uh, discussing that coming up in the second hour this evening. And if your local station doesn't carry all of the show, you can always listen to the streams or the free podcast or the free iPhone app uh, at Infowars.com. Or if you miss any uh, of the broadcast, it's all at Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and of course, JonesReport.com. Uh, so we're going to be uh, looking uh, at this Arpaio situation versus what's happening in, o in Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, and other states. Because it's not just happening in this news report in Pennsylvania. We also have, in the last two months, three separate Tea Party groups in Ohio uh, were told, you're not allowed to demonstrate, you're not allowed to have rallies, because we think you're a hate group. And if the government now doesn't like you, you're not allowed to demonstrate. Now, now notice how they say, oh, you got to have a permit to demonstrate. They turn it right into a privilege. Then they just stop issuing the permits. You don't need a permit. The courts have ruled over and over again to demonstrate. You need a permit to block a highway or a road for, say, a Macy's Day parade. You need a permit to block uh, you know, uh, major city streets. The police... And, and, and local city councils and, 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 and legislatures and, and the state police and others are all across the country, different agencies are always trying to say, we're not going to issue you a permit. They cannot stop you. They have literally lost thousands of lawsuits in the last hundred years on this subject. And Friday, on Constitution Day, a federal judge overthrew the uh, particular city in Ohio's block on the Ohio Tea Party for being able to celebrate Constitution Day.
But the reason they were blocking them was because these different private intelligence groups that get taxpayer money had put them on a list. And, and this was a mainline Tea Party group they put on a list and, and banned from, from protesting. But, but you still can't ban black supremacists, Mexican supremacists, white supremacists, and others. That's how they always try to set the precedent in Europe and other places and now in the U.S. Oh, well, they're extremists. They can't demonstrate. Well, once you take their rights, you lose your rights. It's very elementary. But the big issue here is everywhere government is trying to block people's rights to free speech on the internet, their right to rally, their right to demonstrate. We're seeing more and more of this, and it's getting very scary. Every week or two, I see a report out of uh, the FBI where they're banning British and EU citizens and others for life to ever traveling to the United States for sending emails to Obama at the White House that are mildly insulting. They don't call for violence. They don't do anything. You know, they call the president mild names, not even profane terms, because it's a family show. I won't even use them. Uh, but you can pull it up, you know, uh, teen banned from life from U.S. for sending email to Obama. It'll pull up, you know, AP, Reuters, you name it. So the issue here is we're being conditioned to accept an end to free speech. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Breyer last week on ABC Good Morning America said, yes, we're going to probably have a court case soon and probably ban burning Korans or Bibles or American flags. Anything that upsets anyone else, you won't be allowed to do. Well, then all free speech is over. And we've got the FCC head, we've got the FCC diversity head on record. You can pull up these clips on YouTube. You know, FCC board member says that they will start regulating speech on the web. Uh, FCC board member says they will force diversity on the Internet. Uh, this is the type of stuff that's going on. You've got the White House regulation czar, uh, who was the boss of Kagan, uh, the new Supreme Court justice. Uh, you know, openly saying we're going to ban saying man-made global warming, anthropogenic global warming isn't real. I mean, literally hundreds of statements a month without even looking. I'm not even looking for this stuff. I just see it everywhere. I'm sure you're seeing it as well on TV, radio, print, where government is calling for censorship of talk radio, the Internet. And, and that's because the dinosaur media is dying. The dinosaur media has been discredited, and so it needs to come in and start using government control to shut down its competition. That's why we have this dangerous perfect storm of old dinosaur media, so-called liberal progressive media predominantly, that almost no one buys into, teaming up with government to try to come in and start restricting free speech. So if you want that God-given right protected, for your right to speak up, your right to write an email, your right to rally, your right to demonstrate, your right to have access to the websites you want to read, you had better support everyone else's free speech, even if you hate it, even if it's abhorrent, even if it's horrible. But more on that coming up. But this is really creepy all over the country that they've got foreign intelligence groups, private intelligence groups being paid, in some cases, millions of dollars in the aggregate to spy and create files on the American people. And, of course, every time we get these files going back for a decade, this, this didn't start under Obama. This was going on under Clinton, accelerated under Bush. It's now light speed under Obama because these presidents come and go. The bureaucracy stays the same, and it works for the big offshore banks. And in all these documents, in fact, there's new ones out today. They say number one threat isn't Muslim extremists. They aren't even on the chart. They aren't even on the radar. Number one returning veterans, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, and then down the rung, land rights activists, Second Amendment activists, and then peace activists, and Quakers and everybody else. Basically, if you're politically active, the government's watching you. This isn't freedom. This is tyranny. Now, the big news is straight ahead. Stay with us. World government coming up.